Hello, and welcome to this lesson on um, using the Pythagorean theorem to find the distance between two objects. Um, the center question says, how do I apply the Pythagorean theorem to find the distance between two points on a in a coordinate plane? Um, and so this problem and these uh, problems will be given right triangles, we'll be doing Pythagorean theorem. Um, so this is just another kind of use of the Pythagorean theorem. Did you know, again, because it's so important, GPS could not exist without the Pythagorean theorem. The distance formula is just like Pythagorean theorem, just kind of written in a, in a different way. Um, if we think of all the things that we use distance directly or indirectly in our everyday life, things like Google Maps, GPS, um, weather predictions, airplanes while in flight, missile guidance systems, like all of these things would be impossible without the Pythagorean theorem. Now we have one vocabulary word, the distance formula. And you're looking at that and you're probably going, holy cow, that is ugly. And you're right, it is ugly. The good news is we don't actually have to use that formula. That formula is not provided to you on the formula sheet. But the Pythagorean theorem is. And this formula really turns into the Pythagorean theorem. I mean, th this is just through the process of solving the Pythagorean theorem. That's what this is. And I'm going to demonstrate that to you here in a second. And then we're never going to use this formula again, at least not this year. Um, you'll be doing more distance formula as you continue on in math, and you will actually have to use the formula more. Um, but for this lesson, we're mostly focused on the Pythagorean theorem. So check this out. So why does this distance formula work? So here are two points. If I wanted to find the distance between these two points, these two points, so this is A at point 1, 1, this is B at point 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay? So I could write down that distance formula. D equals the square root of, okay, I wasn't sure if it's X or Y first, it really didn't matter, but X2 minus X1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. That is the distance formula. T. And just like when we were finding our slope, this would be the x value of the first point, the y value of the first point, x2, y2, and I would plug those values in, and we get x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared equals 4 squared plus, let's see, 5 minus 1 is 4 squared. And I think I messed up because 3 minus 1 is not 4. 3 minus 1 is 2. And 2 squared is 4. And 4 squared is 16. And then when we would simplify, we would add those two together and get 20. And finally, if we take the square root of 20, we get a distance of 4.47, and I'm going to stop there, units. Um, I, I, I'm rounding to my nearest hundredth. He's less than five, so the seven stays the same. Okay, that is the distance formula. Not entirely pretty. Now, I told you that this is pretty much the exact same thing as the Pythagorean theorem, and it, it really is. So check this out. Feel your pretty picture here. Could you imagine a right triangle in that picture using this as one of the sides of the right triangle? You probably can. Um, most people come up with this or the same thing, but across the top. So I'm going to pick one. I'm going to use this one here. This, if we could figure out how far this is, this distance here, that's an X. If we could figure out how far this is, well, it's going to be this. That's the distance between these two points. It's that. But we already know how to do this because look at this. This side is two units. This side is one, two, three, four units. 
So if I do Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. My longest side goes in over here. So 2 squared plus 4 squared equals x squared. I want you to check, take a look at this step right here. They're very similar, aren't they? If I would square root both sides right now to get rid of this x squared, these two sides would be identical. And then I would do 4 plus 16 equals x squared. That is the same as that step. That's just me doing the math. 2, time, two squared is 4. 4 squared is 16. I would add them together. That is the same as that step. And then finally, when I square root both sides, x equals 4.47. And that is that step. So you see, that distance formula really is the Pythagorean theorem, just written in kind of an ugly way. It's a way that's useful if you don't have a picture drawn, if you just have two points like this. But I have a strategy that we don't have to remember this. We can continue using this formula that we're familiar with. So let's get to it. So this would be a typical distance formula type problem. What is the length of the segment that goes from here to here? I could write down that whole big ugly formula and plug in the values, label x1, y1, x2, y2, and go from there. And if you want to memorize that and you want to learn that, by all means, do it. That's not the method I'm going to use, though. I'm going to use Pythagorean Theorem. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start by drawing an ugly triangle, right triangle. I'm not even really paying attention to where these points are. Okay, I'm just drawing a right triangle. So to find out how big the different side lengths of my triangle are, let's take back a look at the picture up top here. In my picture, I found this was a side length of two. Doing the distance formula, I found it was a side length of two. How? Well, I subtracted the x values. This x value is 1, this x value is 3. Well, the distance between 1 and 3 is 2. So if I subtract my x values, that tells me how far apart the points are in the x direction. Same thing in the y's. If I take and I subtract my different y values, this has a y value of 1, this had a y value of 5. So from 1 up to 5 is 4 units. So let's apply this down here. I'm going to take and subtract my x values. And that's going to give me, well, let's do 4 minus negative 3. That's 7. These two points are 7 units apart in the x direction y minus y, 2 minus negative 4, that's 6. These two points are 6 units apart in the up-down direction. Now, another strategy. If this is very confusing to you, like the, the, the draw in the picture, and obviously it's the first question, it's going to be confusing. When you get more practice, you get better, but you are always allowed to ask for a piece of graph paper 100% of the time. Tests, quiz, homework, PSSAs, anything. You could say, hey, could I get a, a blank piece of graph paper? And we can give them to you. You could then just graph these two points and draw the triangle um, like this, and the problem becomes very easy. Okay? So another strategy. And now I have two points out of, or two sides out of three. I Pythagorean theorem equals c squared. I'm going to change color so get some separation between the problem. So we got six squared plus seven squared equals x squared. That is my hypotenuse, the x. And to save some space, six squared plus seven squared is eighty-five equals x squared. When I square root both sides to get the x squared to become just a plain old x, we get the square root of 85 is 
two, two. I round it to my hundredths place, tenths, hundredths, thousandths. So I rounded to that, and because his buddy next door is bigger than a or five or bigger, he rounded up. And there we have it. That's the distance between these two points. Now I intentionally, well, when I subtracted these, I kind of made sure I put this one first and this one second to make this first problem easy for you. But what happens if when you're subtracting, you get a negative number? Well, let, let's check out the second problem and we'll, we'll, I'll demonstrate that. So first off, I draw an ugly triangle. Boom. I'm going to subtract my x values to find out how far apart they are in the x direction. And when I subtract my y values to find out how far apart they are in the y direction. So this little picture here is kind of like the formula I do in my head. You can't see my air quotes, air quote, my formula. This is kind of the game plan that I do. So if I subtract the x's, negative 5 minus 1, and the y's, 2 minus negative 4. On the y side, 2 minus negative 4 is 6. Actually, I think those are the same two numbers as the previous problem. But for the x's, when I take negative 5 minus 1, I'm going to get a negative 6. And that might be a little weird to you for two reasons. First off, um, in a triangle, I've never seen a side length of a negative number. Neg like You can't have a side length of negative 6. Measurements, lengths, are not negative. So that's a little weird. But the good we can like actually fix that problem two ways. I'm gonna I'm gonna highlight the problem. This this is the problem right here. Okay. We can fix that two different ways. Way number one, when we're doing our Pythagorean theorem, we can actually just plug in the negative six. As long as you're careful. Check this out. If I type in right now, negative 6 squared plus 6 squared, this is not going to give me what I want. This is probably going to spit out 0. And that is not the right answer. The reason is, is that this calculator um, doesn't interpret this negative 6 as actually being a negative number. It thinks of it as Here's a negative of 6 squared. So it actually does the exponent part first and gets 36, and then throws a negative in front and makes it negative 36. Well, that's not what we want. To make the calculator do what we want, we say, no, 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 no. It's a negative 6 that we're squaring plus 6 squared. This should give us 72. OK? So there's one way around this. When you ever you're putting something in Pythagorean theorem, whenever you're squaring something, specifically in the calculator, make sure you put parentheses around the negative number so the calculator understands that it's a negative 6 that it's squaring, not just the 6 that it's squaring like this. So that's one solution to the problem, and we get 72 equals c squared. And we, we will continue the problem here in a second. The other solution is... If we would have subtracted these two numbers in the in a reverse order, notice how I don't have like x2 minus x1. It's just x minus x. You can subtract them in any order. Watch what happens if I flip the 1 and the 5. Oops. It's 1 minus negative 5. 1 minus negative 5 is a positive Four. What did I? Yeah, that's positive four. Did I mess up the first one? Negative five minus one is negative six. Negative one minus negative five is four. Oh, because I'm dumb. I'm trying to figure out why they're not the same. It should be the same number. It's because it's not a negative 1. It's a positive 1. 
Gotcha. <laughs> Hopefully you saw that before I did. All right. Now we're back in business because now one minus negative five is a positive six. That's the point I was trying to show you is if you switch the order when you're subtracting, it changes the sign of your solution. Instead of being a positive six, it's now a negative six. And that's okay. That seems more reasonable to us as we're doing our Pythagorean theorem because we don't need a negative side length. So we could just go, you know what? Boom. I got rid of the negative. It's a positive six. So you could actually just literally, in this type of problem, drop the negative, and you're still fine. Now, when we continue our problem and we square root 72 on both sides to get rid of the c squared, make it just plain old c, we get 8.49. I'm rounding to my nearest hundredths place, and that's it. Okay. So the point of that problem was to not be freaked out by having a negative side length. You can actually just drop the negative. You can reverse the order that you subtract and you will get a positive number. Or you can input the negative number in Pythagorean theorem. Just make sure you put parentheses around the negative. Okay, one for you. Go ahead and pause the video. Do this on your own right now. When you're ready, continue hit play and we'll go through it together. All right, so my junky triangle, boom, boom. I'm going to subtract my x values. I'm going to subtract my y values. So x minus x is 0 minus negative 9 is a positive 9. 0 minus 12 is a negative 12, but I don't want a negative 12. I'm not going to use a side length of negative 12 because negative 12, it, it, it's not a side length. You can't have a length of negative 12. So I'm just going to imagine that this is a positive 12. It would be like a positive 12 going the other way. So when I do my Pythagorean theorem, or I guess the other option would be, you know what? I'm just going to flip these. I'm going to do 12 minus 0, and that's just plain old positive 12. 12 squared plus 9 squared equals c squared. That is my c, the hypotenuse. And 12 squared plus 9 squared is 225. Ooh, I know that. That's going to be 15 when I square root it. Ba boom, ba boom. C equals 15. If I square root 225, we get 15. So that is 15. The distance between those two points was 15 units. And hopefully you got that. So you see, Pythagorean theorem. It's, it's still there. The only trick here is you have to figure out the side lengths by doing this, by subtracting your x's and subtracting your y's. Now it gets even easier when you have a picture drawn because all we have to do is, is, is I mean, connect the points, draw in a right triangle. Your right triangle should follow these grid lines. So you should have only one diagonal. The rest of them should be like horizontal lines and vertical lines. And you see it makes a little right triangle. Now we just count the boxes. This is three. This is one, two, three, four, five, six. This is seven. And we put that in theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. There's my C. He's the longest side. That gives me 7 squared plus 3 squared equals C squared. That's uh, 49 plus 9 is going to be 58. Let me double check it before I go too far. It's still early in the morning. All right, we're good. And then we square root both sides to make the C squared become just plain old C. And when we square root 58, we got... 7.62 rounded to the nearest hundredth. There it is. 7.62 because it's a 5. The 1 rounds up. And we have it. So really, it, it, it's you draw your picture. There should be only one diagonal line, the line between the two points. The rest of the line should be vertical and horizontal, following the, the grid lines in the coordinate plane. All right, you try this one. Go ahead and pause the video, do it on your own, when you're ready to continue hit play, and we'll go through it together.
All right, so here is my diagonal line. Now to get there using the ups and downs, I'm gonna go down one over however many that is. So this is one in this direction and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in the x direction. Pythagorean theorem says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. One squared plus nine squared equals, the hypotenuse is my c. And that's gonna give me 82 equals c squared because nine squared is 81 plus one squared is one. 81 plus one is 82. And when I square root 82 on both sides, we got nine, oops, let me actually write square root. 9.06, rounding to the nearest hundredth. My five makes this other five go up equals C. Applications. The city of Mathtopia is set up with all roads that make a coordinate system. The library is located at the corner of negative 3,5 street, and the bank is located at the corner of 9,10 street. What is the distance between these two points if you could fly over the buildings? Okay, so we're looking for a straight line distance between these two points. All right, well, I would just draw an ugly picture. I would subtract my x values and subtract my y values to find out how far apart these two points are in the x direction, the kind of left, right, or the east, west direction. So if I do negative three minus nine, ooh, that's negative 12. Uh, let, let's, let's switch them. Nine minus negative three is a positive 12. Ah, much better. So there are 12 units, 12 blocks apart in the X direction, the east west direction. Okay, up, down, north, south. Five minus 10, that's gonna be a negative five. So let's switch them. 10 minus five, there. They're five blocks apart in the up, down direction, the north south direction. And I know the answer to this problem already because I know 5, 12, and something is one of those familiar Pythagorean triples. Five squared plus 12 squared equals C squared. It's gonna be 13. Five, 12, 13 is a common Pythagorean triple. That's 25 and 144 equals C squared. That's 169 equals, ooh, not six. C squared, I square root both sides. And C is 13. So I went a little fast there through the math because, well, we can at this point. You, you honestly should be going fast in math too after this is the fourth lesson on Pythagorean theorem. This should all be very familiar to you. So I'm rambling a little bit while you can get yourself caught up. So this distance between the two buildings is 13 blocks or 13 units. It doesn't really give us feet or miles or anything. So just 13 units. Letter B, what is the distance between your house and your friend's house according to the map? Go ahead and pause the video and try that on your own right now. The distance between your house and your friend's house. All right. I'm gonna start by showing you the biggest mistake I've had students make. I've had students make do this as the triangle they're going to use between their house and their friend's house. And they very quickly come to figure out that they don't have any clue what to do because they don't know how big this is. They don't know how big this is. They can't do Pythagorean theorem to figure out this. That's because this point down here has nothing to do with the problem. I want from here to here. Use this as one of your sides of a right triangle. So I would go down two and over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
That's the triangle you should have drawn. Between your house and your friend's house is two units up and down, 10 units sideways. So then we Pythagorean theorem. And if you messed up and you couldn't get that picture and you're stuck where, well, where I got you caught up to right now, I would encourage you to pause the video and just finish the math here very quickly and then hit play again and we'll go through it together. Everybody else, I'm going through right now. Two squared plus 10 squared equals c squared. That's four plus 100 equals c squared. That's 104 is c squared. And when we square root both sides, we get c equals, I don't know, something a little bit bigger than 10. 104, 10.198. So that, that eight's gonna make the nine round up, which makes this become 10.2. The nine rounds up to a 10, which makes him go up. So 10.2, or you think about it this way, 19, the, the, the decimal part here, 19 rounds up to 20. So it is 10.2 units between your house and your friend's house. A container ships container ship I don't think we need the S there a container ship must travel from China to Long Beach in San Francisco USA how much fuel would be needed if the ship gets a hundred miles per gallon so these markings here aren't very specific but these are the the, the locations on the earth in miles so using like GPS, you've got like the, the, the zero line right here in the middle. So San Francisco is at positive 3,400 units this way. China's at negative 3,400 units that way. And as far as their distance, the up and down, you can see they're actually not terribly far apart. I mean, 2,100, 2,300, they're about 200 miles difference in the north-south direction. So when I made this problem, I actually, I, I actually looked this up. I converted it to something a little bit weirder to make it miles, but it, it's all good. So if I was doing this problem, first off, I'm gonna kind of exaggerate here a little bit. There's my, my, my right triangle with this being my right angle. So I'm gonna take and subtract my, well, X minus X values and Y minus Y values. And my red's not showing up very well for me. So I'm gonna change everything here to black. Red is not one of my strong colors, I can see well. All right, so when I subtract my x values, so I'm gonna take, and I, I can see right now, if I take this number, this negative, minus that, I'm gonna get an even more negative number, like negative, like almost 7,000. So I'm gonna subtract them the other way. I'm gonna take the 3,490.8 point, point minus, negative three four one four point eight that's gonna give me a positive number so three four nine zero point eight minus a negative three four one four point eight gives me okay so these two cities these two places locations are 6,905.6 miles apart in the left right direction. So across the Pacific Ocean here, it's the almost 7,000 miles. Okay, in the up down direction, I'm gonna subtract and I'm gonna do this strategically so I get a positive number. So I'm taking the bigger number minus the smaller number minus two one five two gives me a distance of a hundred and seventy nine point five so they're 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 not too far apart in the up down direction 179 miles of difference up down now all of that was needed to find the side lengths of this right triangle so now i can do pythagorean theorem to find out this diagonal distance so a squared plus b squared equals c squared Six nine zero five point six squared plus one hundred and seventy nine point five squared equals c squared. The c is my 
hypotenuse, the, the actual distance. And thank goodness we have a calculator because I would not want to do all this math in my head. So 6905.6 squared plus 179.5 squared is... I'll write it down for completeness sake, but I usually wouldn't. 477195311.6 equals C squared. Now we're going to square root both sides. And I'm going to hit square root. And then I'm just going to say second answer. It's going to, that way I don't have to type this whole big, huge, ugly thing in again. I'm going to square root that answer. And we get C equals. 6907.93. So the boat would travel 6907.93 miles. Okay, so there's the first part of this answer, which actually is not even what's being questioned, but that's a, the, the first kind of milestone for us. So we found the distance that the boat would travel from here to here. It would travel 6,907.93 miles. The question was, how much fuel would be needed if the ship gets 100 miles per gallon? So if this is how far it's going, how many gallons of fuel would it need if it gets 100 miles every gallon? Well, that's actually not too bad. We would take that number and we would divide by 100. 100 miles per gallon. If we divide by 100, that'll tell us how many gallons of gas were needed. So 6907.93 six nine oh seven point nine three divide by a hundred gives us sixty nine point zero seven nine three gallons or that's just over sixty nine gallons of fuel and that's why most of our um, goods that travel across the ocean don't go by airplane, they go by boat. Boats actually can get 100 miles per gallon on fuel because once they get going, they just kind of keep going and they, they, they can coast on the water a little bit. Their, their momentum carries them. Um, so it, it's not super duper expensive to transport over the ocean. And there we have it. So we found... We, we subtracted our x values find out how far apart they are in the x direction and the north-south direction. We threw those numbers in Pythagorean theorem to figure out how far apart those two locations are. Once you knew how far apart they were, we divided by 100 because the, the, the ship gets 100 miles per gallon. So how many 100s are in here? Well, we divided by 100. We found there are 69 point whatever gallons in there all right using this map from letter b so this is the same map as before how much closer to school is your friend's house than yours i want you to pause the video i want you to ooh, try it on your own when you're ready to continue hit play and we'll go through it together All right, so here's your friend, and here's you. And you want to know how much closer is your friend's house to school than yours. Well, to find the distance from your friend's house to the school, you would use this right triangle. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. To find out how far you live from school, you would use this right triangle. Four and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then you'd have to do Pythagorean theorem here to find this distance. Do Pythagorean theorem here to find this distance. And then you can figure out how much closer it is. If you got stuck partway through that problem and you got stuck up to here, I would encourage you to pause the video and actually do the math on your own now. If you're good, then let's keep going. So I'm going to do... 
your house first. I'm gonna change him to um, pink, magenta, whatever color that is. So the magenta house. A squared plus B squared equals C squared gives us four squared plus seven squared equals C squared. Mm -hmm. Oh man, four squared plus seven squared, there we go, is 65 equals C squared. And then I'm gonna square root, I'm gonna, a number just barely above eight. C equals 8.06. And there was a square root in there, there we go. So you live 8.06 units from school, blocks, we can call it. All right. Now, your friend. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Like, if you don't remember the formula by now, um, something's wrong. I mean, how many times have we had to write down this formula for all of these problems? For This is the fourth lesson now on Pythagorean theorem. You should hopefully have it buried deep in your brain and you're, you're, you're dreaming about it. It keeps popping up in your nightmares because you keep hearing it and seeing it. 6 squared plus 5 squared gives us 61 equals C squared. We're going to square root both sides. Do, 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 do. And C equals the square root of 61 is 7.81 units. And so now we can actually answer the question. How much closer? Obviously your friend is closer. His number is smaller, but how much smaller? Well, 7.81, how much closer? That's a subtraction, just like how much bigger, how much smaller, how much colder. If you're comparing two things, that's almost always going to be a subtraction. Minus 8.06 gives us... No, I, I subtract the wrong way. If you put the bigger number first, you'd get a positive 0.25. So 8.06 minus 7.81 equals a positive 0 0.25. So your friend lives... 0.25 units closer or 0 0.25 units closer there we go so we found out how far I live from school found out how far my friend lives from school and we subtracted the distance to find the difference summary in your own words, describe how to find the distance between two points on a coordinate plane. So you could describe from the pretty picture, like if, if you had an actual graph and two points on the graph, you could describe from um, just two points. How would you do it? Go ahead and pause the video and, and think about it. Write it out. Summarize. Okay, so... Um, from a picture, I would say, well, you, you draw your right triangles. So here in this red problem, you, you would I mean, connect the two points to give you the diagonal distance, and then you follow the grid lines to make your right triangle. Once you know that you count the side lengths, and then you do Pythagorean theorem. If you're going from, um, there we go, two points like this problem, where we just had two points, Things you can do, strategies you can use. You can draw yourself an ugly triangle, and when you subtract the x values, that is the distance that these two points are in the x direction, and we subtract the y values, that is the distance these two points are in the y direction, and then you Pythagorean theorem. Or you could even said, you know, I don't like this strategy, this doesn't work for me so well, so I got a piece of graph paper, I graphed these two points, and then I just did the Pythagorean theorem. I just I just drew drew my triangle and labeled my points and and went from there. And honestly, all of those methods are good. You you're allowed to make that decision on how you want to do it. Okay. Thank you so much for watching this lesson on finding the distance between two points using Pythagorean theorem. Until next time, toodles.